Hi everybody, my name is Rachel McDermott and I am a scientist studying energy research. I grew up in Raymond, New Hampshire and went to Raymond High School. After I graduated, I went to college to study physics. Physics is the study of the way the universe works, so it's things like gravity and light and radiation and plasma. Physics is so broad that when you study physics afterwards, you can do almost anything you want with that degree. I chose to study new ways of producing electricity that don't harm the planet. When you watch TV or turn on a light or use your cell phone, you are using electricity that was produced at a power plant not too far away from you. Most of the power plants today produce electricity by burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, or gas, or by something called nuclear fission. Both of these processes, burning fossil fuels and nuclear fission, are harmful to the earth. Burning fossil fuels releases gases that pollute the air and water and contribute to global warming, which means the earth is getting hotter. Nuclear fission, on the other hand, doesn't do that but it also produces some pretty nasty waste products or trash that are very dangerous. And even though we've been using fission to produce energy for over 50 years, we still don't know what to do with all of that fission waste. This is why it is so important to find new ways of producing electricity that don't pollute the environment and don't produce any dangerous wastes. You might have already heard of some of the ways of doing this, for example, solar power. Electricity can be produced by collecting sunlight. Or wind power, you can use big spinning windmills to, windmills to produce electricity as well. But both of these have a fundamental problem. Namely, they only work when the sun is shining or when the wind is blowing. And we also need to be able to produce electricity at night and on days when it isn't windy. My job is to research one of the ways that we can do that. It's called nuclear fusion, and it's the process that powers the sun in the first place. Now, as you might know, the sun is really big. It looks small because it's so far away, but in fact, it's huge. The sun is made up mostly of hydrogen, which is the simplest element in existence. You might have heard of other elements. For example, helium is used in balloons to make them float, and oxygen is in the air that we breathe and our bodies need it to survive. Well, hydrogen is the simplest element of them all and the lightest. It's even lighter than helium, so a hydrogen balloon would also float. Stars, like our sun, burn hydrogen, which causes the hydrogen to fuse with other hydrogen to form heavier elements like helium and eventually oxygen. And this process produces a lot of energy, which the sun then radiates away and it travels through space, filters down through the Earth's atmosphere as sunshine, which we feel every day when we go outside. What I'm trying to do, together with thousands of colleagues all over the planet, is to create our very own sun here on Earth, a sun that fits in a room in a building and that will enable us to produce energy just like the sun does, energy that doesn't pollute the environment and doesn't create toxic wastes. That's what we're trying to do. Unfortunately, it's really, really hard because these machines that we need are very complex. The sun is really hot, millions of degrees hot. And to make fusion happen on Earth, we have to heat up our hydrogen to the same temperatures as in the sun or even hotter. But when we do that, the hot hydrogen would melt anything that it comes in contact with. So we need to find a way to confine that really hot hydrogen in a way that it won't touch anything. And the way that we do that is with magnetic fields. You probably have all seen magnets on your refrigerators at home. There are probably magnets holding up pictures or shopping lists right now. The force of a magnet can be used to hold a picture in place, but it could also be used to move another magnetic object without ever actually touching it. 
For example, you can use a magnet to move another magnet without them ever coming into contact. As it turns out, when you heat up gases to very high temperatures, they also respond to magnetic fields. And at that point, we say that the gas is no longer a gas, but rather a plasma. There are actually four states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, plasma. If you heat up a solid, you can make it melt into a liquid. And if you heat up a liquid, you can make it evaporate into a gas. And if you heat up a gas, it eventually breaks down into a plasma. Think about ice to water to steam. And if you kept on heating that steam up, it would eventually become a plasma too. So what we do is we use very big, very powerful magnets to create an invisible bottle that holds our really hot hydrogen gas, or plasma, away from the walls of our machine. Our machines are called tokamaks, and they are shaped like big, empty donuts. Right now, I am standing inside the Aztec Upgrade Tokamak, which is in Germany, where I work. Now, I'm wearing some pretty funky clothing here, and this is because tokamaks need to be kept really clean. I'm not allowed to leave any fingerprints inside, and I can't leave any hair either. Even my shoes have to be covered. We pump out all the air from inside a tokamak so it's empty, just like in outer space. Then we put a little bit of hydrogen inside and heat it up while at the same time turning on our magnetic bottle. And voila, a small donut-shaped sun. This bit we've already done. We do it almost every day, in fact. What we haven't done yet is produce electricity. And that's because there are still a few problems that we need to solve. And that's where researchers, like me, come in. A big part of my job is looking at light. I look at a lot of light. The sun shines and our plasmas do too. And the light that they emit contains information about them that we want to know because it helps us learn how to confine them better and how to make them produce more energy. If you have ever seen a rainbow, then you know that light is composed of many colors. Rainbows are formed when the light from the sun is separated into its individual colors as it passes through water droplets in clouds. I use a special machine called a spectrometer to split the light from our plasmas into separate colors. And the shape and amount of light that I see at the different colors tells me how hot the plasma was, how fast it was moving, and what was in it. For example, maybe our machine sprung an air leak. If so, then there would be nitrogen and oxygen in the plasma because that is what the air is made of. And the light that I see would tell me that and then it would be my job to tell my coworkers so we could find the leak and repair it. Or maybe we're testing new ways of heating up the plasma because we have to get it really hot to make it fuse. And we want to know if it's working or not. The only way to know that is to take the plasma's temperature. And again, that's my job. The light that I see would tell me what the temperature of the plasma is and if it's getting hotter or not. I'm a spectroscopist, so a big part of my job is to measure that light, to understand what it tells me, and then to communicate that information to all the people that I work with. Now, I work at the Aztec Upgrade Tokamak in Germany, which is in Europe. But there are other tokamaks all over the world. For example, in the United States, there is a good-sized machine in New Jersey and another in California. And there are several smaller devices at universities all over the country. The largest tokamak the world has ever seen is presently being built in France, and it's called Eater. It will be the first tokamak that will demonstrate that it's possible to produce net fusion power on Earth. And I say net because it means more power out than in. So right now, we put more energy into our machines than we get out. But in Eater, once we put enough energy in, the plasma will get so hot that enough fusion will start happening that it'll produce more power than we put into it. 
and that's how you make a fusion power plant. Now this will happen in another 15 years. I know, it's a long time away. But that's because tokamaks take a really long time to build because they are very, very complicated. But when it does happen, we will have demonstrated that it is possible to produce a burning sun on Earth and produce our own clean fusion power.